And breaking tonight, the mother of the Richneck Elementary School shooter will spend two years in state prison. Today, a judge called Deja Taylor's actions egregious after she was found guilty of felony child neglect. Emily Harrison was there when the judge handed down the sentence. She is live now. And Emily, this decision goes well beyond the sentencing guidelines. That's exactly going to be the case. A Newport News judge sentenced Deja Taylor to a total of five years, two of which she will spend in state prison. And the other three years are suspended at this time. The judge told the courtroom he could not follow the sentencing guidelines of zero to six months because, quote, these guidelines do not take all the facts and history of this case into account. In the city of Newport News, Virginia, a six-year-old boy committed a heinous act. He shot his teacher with a 9mm handgun, critically wounding her in front of her first grade class. But this was not just the result of a curious child finding a gun in their home. It was the product of neglect and recklessness on behalf of his mother, Deja Taylor. Taylor had already been sentenced to federal prison for using marijuana while owning a firearm. And now she faces up to five years behind bars for felony child neglect. The judge will have the final say in her punishment. But how did this all happen? Taylor claimed she had secured her gun with a trigger lock, but investigators found no evidence of one. They did, however, find nearly an ounce of marijuana in her bedroom. This incident shocked the nation and left the city of Newport News reeling. The innocent classroom shooting turned out to be the result of a mother's negligence and illegal actions. As we await Taylor's sentencing, we can only wonder what could have been done to prevent such a tragedy from occurring. One thing is clear, stricter gun laws and responsible ownership could have made all the difference in this devastating case. Only time will tell if justice will truly be served for Abby Zwerner, the teacher who fell victim to this senseless act. As Taylor sat in court, her attorneys argued for leniency, citing the mitigating circumstances of her miscarriages and postpartum depression. But behind the seemingly sympathetic facade lurked a darker truth. Taylor had also been diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder, a condition that shares symptoms with both schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. And as the details of the case unraveled, it became clear that her mental health struggles were not just a mere footnote in this tragic story. In the small town of Virginia, a six-year-old boy committed a heinous act. He shot his teacher with a 9 millimeter handgun, critically wounding her in front of her first grade class. But this was not just the result of a curious child finding a gun in their home. It was the product of neglect and recklessness on behalf of his mother, Deja Taylor. Taylor had already been sentenced to federal prison for using marijuana while owning a firearm. And now she faces up to five years behind bars for felony child neglect. The judge will have the final say in her punishment. But how did this all happen? Taylor claimed she had secured her gun with a trigger lock but investigators found no evidence of one. They did, however, find nearly an ounce of marijuana in her bedroom. This incident shocked the nation and left the city of Newport News reeling. The innocent classroom shooting turned out to be the result of a mother's negligence and illegal actions. As we await Taylor's sentencing, we can only wonder what could have been done to prevent such a tragedy from occurring. One thing is clear. Stricter gun laws and responsible ownership could have made all the difference in this devastating case. Only time will tell if justice will truly be served for Abby Zwerner, the teacher who fell victim to this senseless act. As Taylor sat in court, her attorneys argued for leniency, citing the mitigating circumstances of her miscarriages and postpartum depression. But behind the seemingly sympathetic facade lurked a darker truth. Taylor had also been diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder, a condition that shares symptoms with both schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. And as the details of the case unraveled, it became clear that her mental health struggles were not just a mere footnote in this tragic story. As the sentencing began, Taylor's attorney read a brief statement on her behalf, claiming that she would feel remorse for the rest of her life. But for Zwerner and those affected by this senseless act of violence, those words provided little solace. The bullet fired from Taylor's gun left Zwerner with a shattered hand and punctured lung. The teacher bravely ushered her students to safety before collapsing in the school office. But perhaps most chilling were the words spoken by the six-year-old who pulled the trigger. 
As he was being restrained by a reading specialist, he callously declared, I shot that blank dead, and boasted about obtaining his mother's gun the night before. It was a gruesome reminder of the devastating effects of access to firearms in the wrong hands. Zwerner's testimony during Taylor's federal sentencing remains a chilling reminder of the trauma she endured. As she lay on the cold hospital bed, fading in and out of consciousness, she couldn't help but wonder if this would be her final moment on Earth. But even after nearly two weeks in the hospital and five surgeries to repair the damage to her left hand, Zwerner's struggles had only just begun. The simple tasks of getting dressed or tying her shoes became painful reminders of the attack she suffered. Now, Zwerner is seeking justice by suing Newport News Public Schools for $40 million, claiming that administrators ignored repeated warning signs that the boy who attacked her was carrying a gun. She has lost not only her sense of self, but also her livelihood and financial stability as a result of the incident. No longer able to work for the school system or teach children whom she once loved, Zwerner now lives with constant fear and anxiety. Her daily battle against deep emotional scars does not go unnoticed as she continues therapy and has been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. In addition to all of this, she also struggles with depression and anxiety. Zwerner's story serves as a stark reminder of the lasting impact that one act of violence can have on a person's life, leaving behind a trail of emotional and physical damage that may never fully heal. Amid the ongoing criminal and civil cases, the family of the first grader who shot his teacher has remained quiet until now. Does he talk about the incident? No. We talk, we play, we, you know, do Uno, draw pictures, but nothing of the incident. Deja Taylor says she was stunned on January 6th when she got a phone call that there had been a shooting at her child's school. I wasn't even able to get dressed. I ran out in PJs to the school. Has he processed the magnitude of, of what happened? Well, in my opinion, um, he processes the events leading up to it. Um, he talks a lot more about the day before or the two days before um, than he does about January 6th. You released a statement shortly after the incident, and I just want to quote it. You said, our son suffers from an acute disability and was under a care plan at the school that included his mother or father attending school with him and accompanying him to class every day. The week of the shooting was the first week when we were not in class with him. What can you tell us specifically about your son's disability? He has ADHD. Some are able to have it at a very mild rate, but he's off the wall, doesn't sit still ever. And why did the school decide that it was no not longer necessary for the family to be in, in class? Because we ended up working with another doctor. He had started medication and he was meeting his goals um, academically. Had your son ever spoken like about hurting the teacher or was there anything like any angst that he had against her? No, he actually really liked her. I will say that week he did come home and he was talking, you know, a lot about how he felt like he was being ignored. So he would come home and, Mom, I don't think that she was listening to me. I didn't like that. And then actually he ended up getting suspended the next day because he was in class. He was trying to tell her something. Um, and she asked him to go sit back down. He threw his arms up. He said, fine. And when he threw his arms up, he knocked her phone out of her hand on accident. And he got suspended for that. Zwerner did not respond to ABC News's request for comment, but in a lawsuit, she says the student slammed the cell phone on the ground so hard that it cracked and shattered. She's now filed a $40 million lawsuit against the Newport News School District and Rich Neck Elementary officials, claiming they ignored multiple warnings about the student's behavior and concerns that he had a gun. According to the suit, the child had a history of random violence and that he attacked students and teachers alike both in and out of school. Is that description accurate? Whether it is or it isn't, the school enrolled him in September knowing all of the past behaviors, and they also knew that he had not attended only about two months of kindergarten and about two months of pre-K. And you say that to say that they then own the responsibility? Absolutely. If they believed all these behaviors to be true, and they should not have allowed him to be into first grade. 
The school district released a statement to ABC News saying it cannot release information about a student's educational record. And last month, the district filed to dismiss Werner's suit, arguing her injuries fall under workers' compensation. The gun used in the shooting was legally purchased by Taylor. She says it was kept locked away. How did your son access the gun? Nobody knows. No one knows? You'd have to ask him. Have you asked him? No, not yet. That's certainly something that will be probably brought out during litigation. Let me just ask this, and I'll direct it to you, Jimmy. Is it that no one has asked him how he got it, or you're just not ready to reveal how he got it? I'm not, we're not ready to discuss that at oh, this okay. point. Understood. Um, I'm, I am, yes, people have talked to him about that. I don't know that any adult knows exactly how he got the gun. Was the gun locked somewhere? It was locked somewhere. Mm -hmm. In April, Taylor was charged with a felony count of child neglect and a misdemeanor count of recklessly leaving a firearm as to endanger a child. Her trial is set for August. What was your reaction to those charges? I am not sure. It was, it was shocking. It still is a little shocking. Do you feel in any way responsible for the shooting? Yes, of course. Um, that is my son. So I am, as a parent, obviously willing to take responsibility for him because he can't take responsibility for himself. The idea that, that you could face up to six years in, in prison, do you feel that that would be a fair penalty? I mean, of course, I don't believe that that is fair, um, but anything for my baby. Do you feel that there is some racial component to it? Absolutely. I think that... Um, if the dynamics were different, if the teacher was maybe looking like me and the student was Caucasian or another nationality, it wouldn't be as pumped up as much. Anything that, that either of you would like to say to Abigail's Werner? First of all, I'd like to say that I'm glad you're doing better. I'm sorry that you got hurt. Just like I'm sorry that the kids in that classroom had to witness such a terrible uh, incident. But on the same token, I'm really sorry my great-grandson had to go through this ordeal. I just truly would like to apologize that, you know, out of the incident, she did get hurt. We were actually kind of forming, like, a relationship with me having to be in the classroom. Um, and she was a really bright person.